bringing the message of hope, health, and healing. Richard and Betty Jean Money present Christ the Healer. Join Richard and Betty Jean as they exercise their divine call to present Christ the Healer, healer of the hopeless, the hurting, and the sick. With a message of comfort and victory today, Christ the Healer. And now your host, Evangelist Richard and Betty Jean Money. Hey, thanks for tuning in to us to this time. Hey, we have a lot of fun. You never know what's going to happen around here. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, we just have to let the Holy Spirit take over and do what He wants to do. But this is Christ the Healer, and we're so glad you tuned in. And we hope this program will be informative, and we hope that it will help you. Our guest tonight is Bob McCarran. And Bob, we just want to welcome you and thank you for, um, we've known you for quite a few years. Um, where, where were you when you got saved? I was in a little town in uh, Mississippi where I was born and raised uh, mm -hmm. until I got out of college. But I was, uh, my mother um, always took me to church and in a little Baptist church there in a small town and I just owe so much to her for, mm -hmm. for doing that. Mm -hmm. for, uh, that's how my, that I attribute a lot to my mom, my spiritual, Amen. you know, mom, because Amen. she was so, uh, she was very faithful and taking me to church. And uh, when I was about 11 years old, we had a revival in our Baptist church there, and uh, as most Baptists do, they gave an altar call for people to come forward Praise to God. accept the Lord. So I walked down the aisle and accepted the Lord Jesus Christ for the first time as my personal Lord and Savior. Hallelujah. And I was about 11 years old, I think in the fifth grade at the time. Hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, we're, just, we're just really thankful that you're here. You know, a lot of people have this, uh, this idea mm -hmm. that you have to have a, uh, a testimony of being a, a rough, tough character or whatever. But you know, it's just as important to have a, a testimony of the love of God that that touched your heart at an early age and, and you've continued that all through these years. And uh, God God sees that as a faithful servant. And uh, we just want to let you know we're, we're really honored to know you. Amen. Well, I was so, um, God really protected me because I never did get on, uh, was involved in drugs or uh, alcohol or anything like that and basically lived a so-called good life mm -hmm. so to speak yeah although i i was not that close to the lord i knew of god and i felt like that uh, god was protecting me and mm -hmm. uh, he had some some special things in mind for me later on and that, and that did happened. you did, when you were in school being saved at 11 years old um did you have a lot of peer pressure as far as your beliefs, I mean, whether the kids making fun of you or anything like that because of your beliefs? I don't, I don't recall uh, having that peer pressure because I think back then, and Things this was a, a number of years thing. ago, <laughs> it was a different uh, yeah. thing because I think most, a lot of the kids in our school were, were probably saved, or, or at least they were churchgoers. Mm -hmm. So uh, that was not... I don't think it was that unusual a thing for, uh, you know, for that mm -hmm. to happen. And probably most of my, my teachers, in fact, my, I remember one English teacher I had went to the same church I did. So wow. a lot of my teachers were, were believers or, or Christians. So that made a big uh, difference oh, yeah. in, in yeah. my early, uh, you know, mm -hmm. training. And of course, it's a lot different now, as you know. <laughs> yeah. In, in oh, our yeah. School system. Now you, you know. can't even talk about Jesus, or they think you're some kind of freak. Right. right. But you know what? We're not. <laughs> we just love the Lord. Amen. Well, you know, I was raised in a Methodist orphanage, and during the time I was in the orphanage, we went to Sunday school every Sunday. Right. But as far as growing and learning anything about God, I mean, all I ever heard of was the um, name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Ghost. And that wasn't Catholic. That was in the Methodist Church. Um, I know that um, one of my matrons, 
And I, I can laugh now, but at the time I couldn't laugh. There wasn't. <laughs> but we had to sit, mm. you know, because we were from the orphanage, we had to sit way up in the balcony. And there was just something about the mm. Word of God that just, that was the only hope I had, you right. know, as a kid. Right. And I didn't know any different, but I just um, was sitting up in the balcony and I had to go to the restroom. Of all things, I just had to go. And I knew I was going to be in trouble. And I'm telling you, when I, I snuck out, went to the restroom, turned around, and I came back. And one of the girls that hated me, oh, if any of y'all have ever been in an orphanage, you understand what I'm talking about. There's, you, you're not popular all the time. <laughs> and um, this one girl, she just hated me so much. You know, I knew she was going to tell on me for going to the bathroom. And I thought, oh, I've had it now. I've sinned against God. Oh. I'm in trouble now because all that religion, you know, you have, you get all that involved in religion and you think that you're going to get beat over the head by God if you go to the bathroom. That's <laughs> the way I felt. I mean, I was, I was probably nine years old, something like that, you know, and boy, this, this one matron, <laughs> she, she liked to whip on me pretty good. <laughs> I mean, she'd pull my hair, sling me around, you know, do her little number. <laughs> and I remember I stood up to her. I prayed. Oh, I prayed my own little way all the way back on the bus. I, w I knew I was in trouble. And I just said, oh, please, Miss Butler. I'm so sorry I sinned against God. And I'd already told God I was sorry I'd sinned against him. And uh, I really hadn't. I just had to go to the bathroom. Little kid, you know. And she, for the first time in her life, I think she had pity on me. And she didn't whoop me. I just knew I was going to get a whooping of my life. <laughs> and she just looked at me and had mercy on me and sent me to bed. I don't know why I said that unless it's for somebody out there. There's got to be somebody out there that's been in an orphanage and you've been abused in an orphanage. Um, it's, you know, I got slapped around pretty good when I was in an orphanage. In fact, this one matron, I'm telling you, I just thought, well, shoot, when I get old, I'll just... See her in a walking cane, I'll just knock that old cane out from underneath her. <laughs> you know, and but that was the hurt and hatred I had in my heart, you know. And as I got older and I got born again, which is different from just going to church, and uh, now I would ask her to forgive me for giving her such a hard time. You know, it's so different when Christ comes into your heart. Yeah. And when you were 11 years old and you had that experience of change in your heart, even though you were going to church with your mother and you were doing all the right things, but what happened to you from there? Well, I really believe uh, that I did. It was a legitimate experience I had of accepting the Lord. I just did not grow very much mm -hmm. in the church I was in. I, uh, uh, at that time, uh, was not that, you know, just didn't uh, get the teaching where I could really grow. But I knew deep down that, you know, I was in the right place, going to church on Sunday and, and being, uh, and doing the thing with the youth group. I was mm -hmm. part of that. And I had, uh, in fact, uh, one of my Sunday school teachers I actually went to work for when I was in college, what? part time. So, a lot of connections there, in, you know, in in the church. But uh, I really feel like God protected me during those years, even though I did not know very much. Uh -huh. I still believed I really did belong to Him, and He was taking care of me, even though I was not. I was still consider myself at that time. Uh, very immature and just pretty much a baby Christian and did not grow for a long time. I stayed a baby for a long time. So uh, until you, later on in my life. Then you had that other experience uh, uh, that brought you into a deeper walk with the Lord. Do you want to talk yes. about that? And this happened, uh, I believe, in 1973. I don't remember specific dates and times like some people do. But this happened... Uh, I was in a church and we had a small group meeting and a, a man came, a doctor, came to give his testimony. And this doctor, I believe at the time, he was, uh, he was I believe, in, in Galveston. And he uh, shared his testimony and a very powerful 
testimony. Mm. And I think there's nothing that, to me, that, that's more powerful. God uses a testimony. Mm -hmm. We all Amen. have a testimony, and I think that can be mm -hmm. very powerful. Yeah. This man had a powerful testimony of how God had changed his life. He had all the, the things that the world has to offer. Yeah. He had boats and cars and wealth yes. and all of that. And yet God touched this man and changed him. He gave that all up and started ministering to the poor in uh, one of the, either in the fourth or fifth ward here in mm -hmm. Houston at that time. And that, God touched me that night. Amen. He really touched me in deep yes. core Amen. of my being. I, I really believe that yes. I, I received the Holy Spirit in a way yes. I had not received before. And it Amen. filled me with tremendous joy. And I can remember, I still remember that night going home. My wife was not with me. She, yeah. I don't believe she was with me. But I went home that night and I cried all the way home. But it was tears of joy. Hallelujah. And I don't believe I'd cried tears of joy before. <laughs> And I have a lot since, but that was yeah. the first time Amen. I had cried tears of joy. And I knew that was the Holy Spirit, that was God working on me. Because I said, I want what this man has. Amen. I want I want that hunger, I want that knowledge, I want that yes. intimacy of knowing the Lord. That Amen. Can, that can change a person Amen. like that just in the blink of an eye. And God does Amen. that. Praise and God did that for me that night. Hallelujah. And so from that night forward, God started moving in a lot of different ways, uh, not only my life, but my wife, and bringing uh, divine appointments into our lives, mm -hmm. bringing Bible teachers in to teach us the Bible. We've never really gotten much teaching at all. Praise God. But God put a hunger in us, a deep hunger that we, for His Word that we had not had before. And I'll tell you, it was awesome. Amen. It was an awesome time. And that, that continues to this day. But that was a start. Right. Like in, and that was, what, 35 years ago. And that's when you got the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Yes, ma'am. Oh, at right. that time, I got, I, I definitely received, I, re I received the baptism that night, I believe. Hey, I, I know it. I know it. God yeah. touched me in a powerful way. God my, my wife, it's interesting, my wife really, couldn't understand because I got home and I think I shared this with her uh -huh. and she she thought I was just freaked out <laughs> <laughs> because she I don't know she saw something there that she hadn't seen before yeah. so what's happened to you just like you saw something in that other guy that 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 you had never seen before. yeah yeah I saw the yeah. joy of the Lord and I mean I saw I saw the Lord Jesus Christ in this person like I'd never seen him in it. I'd seen pastors and other people in the church, but I saw in this guy the Spirit of the Lord that I had not seen mm -hmm. in people before. And that knew, put that hunger in yeah, you. Yeah. Amen. 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 We all, we all, uh, uh, we're all looking for that, that place that God wants us to be in. And, and I believe that that you're certainly in the place that God wants you to be in. And uh, we're, we're just uh, excited about what God's doing in your life. And uh, in our search for God, we, we sometimes find it in the least likely people. <laughs> <laughs> you know. Exactly. So anyway. Uh, I really believe that was a divine appointment for me to be there. Yes. It was like only a small group, maybe 20 people, 15, 20 people, to hear this Praise man God. give his testimony that night. It was like, I think, a Wednesday night or something at the church. It was a divine appointment. God had me there. And I think, you know, he sets how God orchestrates, <laughs> he sets us up. Yeah. And man, am I glad he did. Well, you know, I'd, I'd like to sing a song right now. Um, there is a song called Surely the Presence of the Lord is in this place. And, and that's probably what you were experiencing yes, that night. Yes. You were experiencing the presence of the Lord. Because when there's the presence of the Lord, there is fullness of joy. Right. And there is a peace that passes all understanding. So I'd like to 
have you join us right now as I sing this song. Surely the presence of the Lord is in us. Thank you for joining us again. And we're going to ask you to pray for us. Those of you who, who are believers, we need your prayers too. We'll pray for you if you'll call us. But we also want you to pray for us. Amen. 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 Um, Bob, 
through the years after that, as the Lord began to uh, take you through a journey of teaching you uh, things about the Word and about God and everything, how did you come to find the Power Evangelism School from Christ the Healer? Well, that's, that's very interesting that you ask that because we were uh, visiting a, a church and we uh, actually sat beside or behind uh, the two of you. <laughs> and my wife just happened to look down and see a flyer for the school, the Power Evangelism School, on the floor. She picked it up. And I think at that time we were looking for something. Mm. God had put something in our hearts. We were looking for something. And she said, you know, this, this looks interesting. And I think we called. We called based on just picking up that flyer that Diane had picked, my wife had picked up under that seat. So that's, yeah. that's how we found out about uh, the school, Power Evangelism School, and that's how we, in, uh, in the year 2000. And so after you graduated, you continued to do street evangelism and other things, and, and now you're one of the directors over street evangelism, and, and you've been with us quite a while. Some of the things that you have seen and experienced out on the streets uh, doing street evangelism, would you share some of those? Um, yes, it, one thing I want to say is I just really felt after I went through the school, I really felt led to really be a part of the street, the street evangelism because mm -hmm. I felt God leading me that way because I think of what Jesus would do if he was walking on the earth today. And I think Jesus would be out there visiting the, uh, first of all, he'd, mm -hmm. uh, he'd be uh, out there on the streets feeding mm -hmm. the people. Amen. Because he said the poor we will always have with us. Yeah. And Jesus, you know, that's what he would be doing. So yeah. God put that burden on my heart that, that to continue the street ministry. So I just, <laughs> I got out, I graduated from the school and just kept coming back. And the Lord has just blessed me tremendously because I, every time we go out on the streets, it's different. <laughs> it's different. Mm -hmm. And you receive a blessing, you get a blessing. Yes. It, it always goes both ways. And... I have just seen so many times out there how the, how the Lord works in people's lives. We pray for people, and you see God really touching them as we pray for them. And it's, it's, not, a, it's not anything of us. We're just God's instruments out there. The Holy Spirit working through us to touch these people. And what a privilege it is to, to be able to, uh, to minister on the streets. We pray for people. We we feed, we feed them, and, and uh, just to see how God has worked. And we've had, I've had a number of, of guys come up to me and you know, come up to us as we minister uh -huh. and say how God has changed their lives. They've gotten off the streets, and that's really an encouragement yeah. uh, for us to hear yeah. a testimony of, of what's happened to, the, to, uh, to somebody we, we pray for. And, uh so in a number, and, and people do get off the streets. We see them out there, but they may be out there just a short time, and, uh, and they uh, are able to find a job and, mm -hmm. and get established again. We've seen that happen over the years. We, we helped a young guy out one time that was sleeping in his car, and uh, the Lord led us to, to pay for about a week for him to, to stay at uh, one of those... Uh, uh, workforce Great. cabins yeah. yeah and uh and so we did that and uh every time we would go over there there was a security guard that would come up to me and talk to me and he knew the situation and uh every time i went he'd say that guy doesn't miss any time going to church he he loves god he's a hard worker he's saving his money so he can get out of here and and get him get his own apartment and get get things going again and so you see those kind of things happen and uh, we've we've seen quite a few things like that happen over the years and uh, it is exciting and it's different you know it is you, it you, is. you never know what each, God's each week do next. Is, uh, each uh, time we go out it is different mm -hmm. because 
uh, you just don't know, you know who's going to show up, who, who God has there for the night, but we know that God is going to touch lives, and that's, that's the exciting thing of how he uses Amen. us. Yes. We're just weak, broken vessels, Yes. And, but God uses us. And, Amen. And, uh, you know, He'll use you too. Yeah, Amen. and you you know Amen. I find sometimes you know I'll be I'll be tired, I'll be tired. It just seems like before time to go out, but the minute we get in the cars and we start heading with, out with the food, it's like I forget all about being tired, and all of a sudden I've got this burst of energy that I don't even know where it comes from except the Lord, and I'm telling you it's it's just. Um, it's just incredible what God does. I've seen people healed, delivered, set free out there, filled with the Holy Spirit. Uh, you know, the testimonies of that go on and on. And we've and seen on. families come back together. Absolutely. Yeah. Be reconciled. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Uh, so. And Bob, uh, would you just pray with people right now? There might be some that were like you, going to church regular, but still had that hunger. All right. Sure will. Father, I just pray right now for those in our in our audience out there, Father, that you would just touch them tonight with your Holy Spirit. Yes. Father, I pray that you would give them a real hunger for your word. Yes. Father, uh, give, uh, give them a real passion and love for the Holy Spirit and for the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Father, we just pray for those who, who may be going to church, they're looking for a church now, Father, that uh, you would put a real hunger in them, Lord, to seek you, Lord, to seek your word, to seek your truth, to seek that relationship, Yes. Father, that's going to be a lasting relationship for eternity. Yes. And Father, if there's anyone out there listening that has not accepted the Lord Jesus Christ, Father, we pray that they would get down on their knees right now, Father, and just commit their lives to you. Lord, in a way that they have not done before and, and ask you, Lord Jesus, into their hearts to change them and make them the person you want to be, Father. Yes. Lord, salvation is free. It's, it's available for everyone out there who, who just seeks and asks and knocks. It says if we just knock on the door, God opens and he's, he, he wants to receive us and we come as we are. So, Father, we just, we just want to commit this time to you, and we commit everyone listening, Father, into your hands that you would just touch them, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you don't have Jesus in your heart right now, if you don't know that you're going to go to heaven right this minute, I want you to pray with me. Mm -hmm. Just say, Jesus, I believe that you're the Son of God. I believe that you died on the cross for me. I ask you to come into my heart and be my Lord and my Savior. And forgive me of my sins, Lord. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer with all of your heart, then Jesus Christ is the Lord of your life. Amen. Amen. Serve him with everything that you have. Amen. 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 Call us. Yes. Contact us. Let us know. Let us yes. know what's going on in your life. Yes. We love you. Yes. And we'll send you this this CD. You'll be blessed. It's our gift to you. We love you. Jesus loves you. Amen. And I'm telling you, Jesus is Lord. He's Lord yes. over Houston, Texas. He's Lord over this yes. planet. Yes. Let him be your Lord. Give him the opportunity to be your Lord. Give him the opportunity to show you. It's the goodness of the Lord that draws men and women to repentance. We want you to be blessed, and we want you to know that Jesus loves you, and we do too.